and welcome to another episode of Handloader TV with me, your host, Jeremiah. And in this episode, we're doing something a little bit different. We're starting a new series dedicated to propellants. If you read Handloader magazine, you'll know that we have a column in there called Propellant Profiles. And this series of videos will be in addition to that Propellant Profiles column and give you some information on various powders that are out there on the market. And first up, we have Accurate Number 7. Now, I want to start out, since this is the first episode and the first time we're covering an accurate powder, with a little bit of history on the company itself. It started out as a machine shop all the way back in 1946 as Accurate Arms and Machine. And then if you continue and you look at the history, which is a little bit murky to be honest, but you look at the history and fast forward all the way up to 1980, Accurate Arms Incorporated moved over to Tennessee and they started selling surplus powder. They were doing that back in Chicago as well and it's kind of difficult to pin down the exact time frame when they started selling uh, propellants, but in Tennessee things really started to pick up and they were doing a lot. By 1987, they were still selling surplus powder, but they started focusing, instead of on surplus powder, switching over to newly manufactured propellants. And business kept improving, getting better, selling more and more powder. And then if you go all the way up until 2005, they were purchased, Accurate Arms Company was purchased by Western Powders Company, and they changed the name to just Accurate Powder, dropping the arms in there. So in 2005, Western Powders broadened their powder lineup by including Accurate in it, and the data was coming directly from them. They did a lot of pressure testing, and data was readily available. Now more recently, if you fast forward to 2020, Hodgden acquired Western Powders Company and merged all of the brands, which included Accurate Powder Company, in that merger. And now the data is readily available on Hodgden's website. And I say all this because Accurate Number 7 has changed quite a bit over the years. Let's go ahead and talk a little bit more in depth about the powder itself and we'll give you some history on it. So Accurate Number 7 itself was actually introduced all the way back in 1983 and as a result it's gone through numerous changes of hands and it's been manufactured in places like Israel, the Czech Republic, and now more recently it's been brought back and is manufactured here in the United States under the Hodgden conglomerate there. So there's a few things to note with that because some of your older data might be a little bit different than your current data. So as a result, if you want the most accurate data, I recommend using the data that is currently available on the Hodgden website. It's the most accurate for the newly manufactured powder. Now it's still generally speaking safe to use the old data, but if you're looking for the velocity and everything else to line up perfectly with the new powder, I recommend using the new data. And again, that's available on Hodgden's website. They've got a great reloading resource. And we also have our own website, loaddata.com, with plenty of data out there for accurate number seven. It is a very versatile powder, and that's something we want to showcase to you today. We've got 5.7 by 28, 9 millimeter Luger, 10 millimeter Auto, and 454 Kazool here. And we're going to shoot each of these just to kind of give you a representation of how versatile the powder is. And we'll pull up a burn rate chart here and kind of give you an idea of its relative burn rate. Now obviously you can't extrapolate load data by saying, oh, I load for this powder so I can go over here and it's within you know, one point or two points in the burn rate chart and I can use the same charge weight. Don't do that, it's just relative to give you an idea, hey, this powder works good in nine millimeter, maybe accurate number seven being close in burn rate to this powder will also work good in 9 millimeter. So keep in mind that it is a relative thing. Now Accurate Number 7 is a personal favorite of mine. I've used it quite a bit over the years in 9 millimeter Luger, in particular to duplicate the 9 millimeter NATO loading, which is a plus P loading of the 9 millimeter. It does very well there. And I've also used it quite a bit in 10 millimeter and had great results with it. Let's go ahead and run over to this microscope here and we'll give you an up close look of the powder itself and kind of talk a little bit more about some of its characteristics. Now that we have the powder under the microscope here and we can take a little bit closer look at it, those grid squares you're seeing there are in tenth of an inch grid squares. 
So you can kind of see how big the kernel size is there and the variation in kernel size as well. Now accurate number seven is ideal for high performance handguns such as the 357 SIG, 38 Super, 40 Smith & Wesson, 5.7 by 28 is another great application. And as I said, I use it nine millimeter and 10 millimeter quite often with very good results. I've also found it to be good in Magnum handgun cartridges, such as like the 454 Kazool that we'll be shooting today, when you're not looking for that peak velocity and performance and recoil, this is great for a more medium power economical load, if you will. And since it is a spherical, or as some people refer to it, a ball powder, it meters very well through powder measures. So it's also a great option to use on your progressive reloading press. So there you have the close up of accurate number seven. Now real quick, I wanna go ahead and walk through some of these firearms, cause I know you guys are probably curious about them. We'll walk through those real quick and then we'll take some loads and we'll hit the range. So as you can see, we have a few handguns lined up before us here and we're gonna take these out to the range, but we're not gonna be so much focused on doing a full load development and finding the most accurate load. Rather, what this video is all about is showcasing to you the versatility and applications for accurate number seven powder. So first up, we have a Ruger 5.7 chambered in none other than 5.7 by 28 a very unique and interesting little high performance cartridge. Sammy maximum pressure on that guy is right around 55,000 PSI. So it's a pretty hot cartridge for a handgun, but accurate number seven does really well in this cartridge and I've had pretty good results with it over the years. Then we have nine millimeter Luger here and the load we're gonna be showcasing for you is gonna be a plus P loading similar to the NATO loading with a 115 grain bullet and we're using a Glock 17 that was customized by Suarez International. It's got a Trijicon RMR on it and a AWC Titanium Abraxas suppressor attached to it. And since this suppressor doesn't have a Nielsen device, it's kind of difficult to find a load that will actually cycle the gun without having to manually rack the slide after each shot. And accurate number seven is more than capable of doing that with this plus P loading. So it's kind of neat there and has a great application for this particular firearm. I use it quite a bit myself. Next up, the 10 millimeter, this is a SIG P320, and we have done a load development video on the 5.7, this SIG, and the Freedom Arms revolver. I'd encourage you guys to check that out. Since we've done the video on the SIG, I've added a couple things, a loophole Delta Point Pro to it, and a Surefire X300 weapon light. This is a, a gun that I carry out in the field quite a bit with me when I'm out hiking and that kind of stuff. I like having the 10 millimeter there and the 15 rounds to go with it is definitely an added bonus. So we'll be shooting that. And then last but certainly not least, the 454 Kazool. We've done a load development video on that particular revolver. It has proven its performance over the years, shooting it and testing various loads through it. Outstanding quality, but I'll be honest with you, the 454 packs a punch and it has significant amounts of recoil. So loading it with accurate number seven, you're still allowed to get some pretty stellar performance from it, but you tame that recoil a little bit as well. So we're gonna go ahead and take these guys, we'll hit the range and shoot them. So as you can see, we're out here on the range now and it is a beautiful day. And according to the Kestrel 5700 here, the temperature is about 78 degrees Fahrenheit. We've got wind coming from the 10 o'clock position at about three to five miles an hour, last I checked. And that's kind of pretty normal. Just a nice little breeze. Humidity is at 30%, altitude's 5,000 feet. Pressure is 25.31 in HG. We have an Ailer Model 35P chronograph set up 10 feet from the muzzle to record all of our velocities. And we have a steel plate downrange at about 25 yards. And the purpose of this video is not so much to showcase the accuracy of these firearms or the loads because we're not running a full load development. We have run load development videos on this Ruger, the SIG P320 and 10 millimeter and the Freedom Arms 454 Kazool. I would encourage you guys to check those videos out for yourself. But pretty much what we're gonna be doing is showing you the versatility of accurate number seven powder. You can use it in the 5.7 by 28 and you can use it in the 454 Kazool. 
a broad range of handgun cartridges. So on that note, let's go ahead and get started and we'll shoot him from the smallest cartridge, working our way up to the big 454 Kazool. So first up is the Ruger 5.7, chambered in none other than 5.7 by 28. This is using, of course, accurate number 7 powder, a 6.4 grain charge with a 40 grain Hornady VMAX bullet, CCI 400 primers, FN cases, and an overall loaded length of 1.580 inches. 5.7 is pretty finicky little cartridge when it comes to your charge weight, so extra care must be taken to ensure your loads aren't over pressure, and it's recommended to work up in 0.1 grain increments, or a tenth of a grain increments. So here we go, let's put it on the steel here. Very nice. 5.7 is a very pleasant cartridge, very pleasant. So next up, I'm shooting a Glock 17 that's been customized by Suarez International, and it has a AWC Abraxas titanium suppressor on it, and it does not use a Nielsen device. So actually, when hand loading for it, oftentimes I'll have to manually cycle the slide. However, as you'll see with accurate number seven and a stout charge, you can actually get the firearm to function flawlessly without a Nielsen device. So what we have here is some 9mm loaded up to plus P pressures, an 8.2 grain charge of accurate number 7 with a 115 grain Winchester full metal jacket, Starline cases, and an overall loaded length of 1.100 inches. And again, we're not overly concerned with the accuracy, we're just gonna get some velocities on these guys and showcase you the versatility of accurate number seven powder. So here we go. Not a huge Glock guy, but uh, I do like this one. So what I have next for you guys is a SIG P320 chambered in 10 millimeter auto. Got five rounds loaded up in the magazine to put on the steel down range here. And we've done a separate load development video on this handgun and cartridge. So I'd encourage you guys to check that out. Since then, I've added a couple of little modifications such as the Loophole Delta Point Pro on here, really liking that so far, and a Surefire X300 weapon light. So, on that note, we will let's bang some steel. Oh yeah, that's fun. That is too much fun. Sometimes you just gotta have fun with your guns and not worry too much about the accuracy. Just go out there and, and shoot and practice and do better, but it's also gotta be fun. So now I have the beautiful Freedom Arms Model 83 revolver out here, chambered in 454 Kazool. And yes, you can use accurate number seven in your 454 Kazool. So let's go ahead and showcase that for you. And we'll put some rounds on steel. And that should be five if I counted correctly. Hopefully this shows for you guys just how versatile accurate number seven can be. It has great applications in your high performance handgun cartridges. We'll go ahead and head back inside and we'll talk about some of the results we've gotten and a little bit more details on the powder itself. So now that we're back inside and at the bench, we've got some load data to go over, and I'll showcase for you guys the load we used in each of these specific cartridges and firearms, and we'll also show you a starting charge for that cartridge and a maximum charge with the bullet we used. 
So taking a look at the first one, 5.7 by 28 out of the Ruger 5.7 handgun, we used in this video a 6.4 grain charge of accurate number 7 to propel a 40 grain Hornady VMAX bullet to an average of 1,743 feet per second. This is kind of a middle of the road charge in this cartridge. You can work up from a starting charge of 6.1 grains to a maximum charge of 6.8 grains and that should roughly generate 48,200 PSI roughly there with the FN cases and the overall loaded length of 1.580 inches. Now the 5.7 is really finicky so when you go to do your load development with this cartridge I'd encourage you to work up in tenth of a grain increments. Small little increments can make a big jump in pressure in this particular cartridge. Now the next cartridge we went ahead and tried is using this Glock 17 chambered in 9mm Luger. We used an 8.2 grain charge in this video of accurate number seven to propel a Winchester 115 grain full metal jacket to 1,304 feet per second average velocity. Now, this is a plus P loading. So standard nine millimeter Luger, you'd start out at a start charge of 6.6 .6 grains with a maximum of 7.8 grains. Now, if you're a particular firearm, and as always, check with the manufacturer to make sure, if it can handle plus P loadings, you can work all the way up to an 8.5 grain maximum charge weight. So you've got a really wide range to work with in the 9mm Luger here, and you can get really impressive accuracy and velocity out of it. The next cartridge is 10 millimeter auto. For this, we used a 10.7 grain charge of accurate number seven. This is a maximum charge to propel a 180 grain Hornady XTP bullet to an average of 1,188 feet per second. Now, the starting charge for 10 millimeter is 9.6 grains and the maximum charge is 10.7. And we went all the way up to max because there's a lot of people out there that like to see full power 10 millimeter. And while you don't get that 1,300, 1,350 feet per second out of it, you can get 1,200 with relative ease using accurate number seven in the 10 millimeter with a 180 grain bullet. And it does help tame that recoil just ever so slightly as well. It's a great option. I'm personally a big fan of this load and I've used it quite a bit over the years. The accuracy has always been really good. And now that brings us to the 454 Kazool, the Freedom Arms Model 83 revolver. And we used a Nosler 250 grain jacketed hollow point and an 18 grain charge of accurate number seven to propel that bullet to 1,240 feet per second. Now the start charge for this particular cartridge and bullet combination is 16 grains and you can work up to a maximum of 19 grains with accurate number seven. And it makes for a little bit more economical loading and it's also a little bit less recoil than those full power H110 Winchester 296 loads that you often see shot in the 454 Kazool. And that average velocity of 1240 is pretty respectable. It's like pretty much a very hot 45 Colt load at that point. And it does a great job, more than adequate for hunting purposes and what have you. So there you have it. There's the whole lineup of load data with accurate number seven that we shot in this video. So now that you've seen the load data and us going through and shooting each of these cartridges using accurate number seven, hopefully you learned something, whether that be about the powder, its burn rate, the company history, whatever it may be, Hopefully you got something out of this video. Personally, accurate number seven for me is a mainstay on my bench because of its versatility and because of the performance you can get in certain cartridges. Overall, I think it's an outstanding powder and if you haven't tried it, I'd encourage you guys to pick up a pound, try it for yourself and see how you like it. And if you already use accurate number seven, I'd love to hear about that in the comment section below. And as always, I want to thank you guys so much for watching the video. We really do appreciate it. If you liked what you saw, give us a thumbs up, let us know, and don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell icon so you're notified when we post our next video because we have many more of these and other exciting projects in the works. Perhaps a load development with this Glock 17 would be something in the future. You can always let me know in the comments below. Or if you have any questions or concerns or anything you want to add, personal experience, 
Try and leave those in the comments below and I will try to respond to each and every one of those as I have time. As we grow, it gets a little bit more difficult, but I do my best. Thank you so much. And I will catch you guys in the next episode. Get out there, put some time behind the bench. Have fun. Mm -hmm.